That's what God did this weekend. Yeah. God called each woman by name, gave her a new name, gave her assignments. Each one of us got an assignment. So to, for us, you know, spiritual gifts, God was just saying, you're a prophet. This one is your, I mean, your teacher. He was just calling out our spiritual gifts. So we are very, very excited. And uh, the title of our women's conference was, It's Time to Get Out of the Boat. And it was all stemming from Matthew chapter 12. But I want to minister today saying, it's time to walk on water. Yeah. Woo! Turn to your neighbor and say, it's time to walk on water. Because we're not only going to stop getting... <laughs> right, Sister Betty? We, we can't just get out of the boat. we go walk on that water. <laughs> it's time to walk on water. And we're going to see the principles that God uses to get us walk on water. Because, you know, I had prepared a very wonderful message on getting out of the boat. And Bishop came and preached all my message and added extra. So I said, I better not touch that topic about the boat anymore because <laughs> this, I will not do justice to it. So let me just leave it alone. Hallelujah. So today, open your Bibles with me. And, um, and we're going to... To, to share the word. Can someone help me with the board? Because I, I want to do some demonstration here. There's a board somewhere nearby. Adriel, can you just sing for me ancient words, ever true, changing me, changing you, just as to get me a board and as I get myself situated on this wonderful pulpit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're here. Spirit of God, you're here. Your glory is here. I declare that I am in your hands. I am a vessel that you have chosen. And these are the vessels you have chosen to receive the word. So we declare that we will never be the same. Just say with me, I will never be the same. My life will never be the same. The word of God is entering into me. And it's changing me. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh, let the ancient words impart. Ancient words ever true, changing me. Changing me and changing you. We have come. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient word impart. Thank you. Holy Spirit, I, 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 the hand of the Lord is already on me. And I pray for grace to deliver the word the way he wants. And I pray that you'll never be the same. It's going to be prophetic teaching. Because the Lord has revealed to me that this passage is actually an explanation of what is happening in the last days and what will happen in the last days. So open your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 14. The verse is about Peter walking on water. It's in verse 27. But we're going to start reading. You all know the story. It was a storm and Jesus was coming, walking on the waters. The disciples saw him. And uh, one person said, I'm going to take the dive. Say, Jesus, if it is you, tell me to come to you walking on water. So we know the story. We're going to read it later, but I want us to start to see the scenario in which this story starts. We want to see the background that Jesus was painting in the scripture. The Holy Spirit was painting to put us in the scene of this walking on water. John Matthew chapter 14, verse 1. 
At that time, he was, the church had heard the reports about Jesus. Every, everybody said, we need reports about Jesus. You know, Bishop has been talking about the report. Whose report will you believe? They had reports about Jesus. And he said to his attendants, this is John the Baptist. He has risen from the dead. That is, that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. They heard reports about who? They heard reports about Jesus and they thought it was who? Who was dead? Someone has already gotten that revelation. <laughs> Jesus doing miracles confused with John the Baptist who was before him. Actually, it was the first time that I heard John the Baptist was doing miracles. All I knew was that John the Baptist was preaching this powerful message of repentance. Right? We all know John the Baptist as this fire and brimstone preacher. But these people, when they saw Jesus do heal the sick, open the eyes of the blind, they said this man is John the Baptist. And it made me think that unbelievers actually may believe this truth more than we believe because they said he was raised from the dead. <laughs> hey. So they believe that a man can die and come back. Why don't we believe that? We to whom was given the covenant to heal the sick and raise the dead. Right? It makes sense. These people said that this is John the Baptist. He has come back. I cut it off his head. <laughs> he did not just die a natural death. Beheaded. And many years, I don't know how many days after, they say he has come back. They believe that it is possible. Tell your neighbor it is possible. Hallelujah. So I don't know what dead state you are in. It is possible that you live again. So I was so intrigued how John the Baptist's life was so likened to that of Jesus. That reports about John the Baptist could be attributed to, reports about Jesus could be attributed to John the Baptist. Brethren, this is what God wants in your life. This is the prophetic and end time church. That we be so much like our master. That when people read the Bible and they read what Jesus did, they say, hey, I saw that Jesus. He lived somewhere on Arnold Street. They can confuse you with Jesus. That is what it means for us to be imitators of Christ. Put for me Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. To be imitators of Christ means that you mimic him. Actually, the word followers of Christ is people who mimic him. Right? Mimic, mimic is an intentional act to look like somebody else. Right? You don't mimic somebody accidentally. Mimicking Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1, please. An intentional act to look like somebody. So I take like Jesus. Jesus, what did he wear? The three things, okay. For, nah, this NIV, no. Follow God's example, therefore, no, let's not, let's not use it. It's a weakened, weakened versions. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm starting to transition from NIV. That was my version. My beloved version. And I'm beginning to see. Therefore, can we read together? One, two, three, go. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Imitators. Brethren, we have been given the right as children to imitate our father. It's not enough for you to come to church. It's not enough for you to just read the Bible. You have to imitate him. To imitate someone, you got to be seeing him closely. You can't watch him from a distance. you got to see what he's doing closely. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ said, I do only what I see my father doing. The son does only what he sees his father doing. Because I must imitate him. 
three things about imitating a person. Number one, you wear the kind of clothes that he wears, right? If, if I come here and somebody's wearing my clothes, I, I don't mind now. Before I, I was going to mind, I'm going to ask you why you decided to reduce my shine. Thank God for deliverance. The men say they are happy when you wear the same things with them. But women, we want to be unique. We are like a bouquet. Every flower is different. It's different. I know. I'm, I'm not wrong, right? Amen. Yeah. So, if someone comes in wearing the same fabric, the same thing like me, immediately, without you talking to that person, you feel like we agreed, right? We are, you, you connect us together somehow. Immediately, you connect us together. We must wear what Jesus wore so that the world will connect us with him. You say, this one, you were with Jesus. I see you, you have been hanging out with Jesus. Number two, we must say the words. If I start saying exactly the things that Pastor Robinson says, you say you have been with that man. They are certain of his statements, his slangs, his... Oh, oh, oh. oh. If somebody... You know, I can always try to tease Pastor. We will sing exactly like him. I know he's been hanging out with him. Sister Kashuku, brother, you don't like my message? Uh -huh. I like it. <laughs> they sang galons and all of that. The third thing to say we imitate on is to do what he does. Amen. The Bible says, if you love one another, in this shall all men know. Why? Because Jesus loved the whole world. He so loved the world. So when you do what he does, you become classified as imitators. So today we're going to be finding mostly about the wearing what Jesus wore. Can somebody tell me what Jesus wore while he was on the earth? Grace, truth, yes. A garment, humility, compassion, the arm of God. Yes, the arm of God, love. Any other answer? Speaking in parables. <laughs> Any other answer? Power. You, did you say power? We are going towards the right answer there. Mercy. Holy Spirit. That's what I was looking for. Okay. So now all of those things you have said are right, but they are inside the garment of the Holy. Somebody said Holy Spirit. <laughs> the gift. Yeah. Receive. Wow. <laughs> he wore the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that the Spirit of God descended upon him. It came on him. So, the Lord Jesus came in humanity and got clothed with divinity. He came with flesh and then put on spirit. And then he said, wait in Jerusalem, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, until you two are Clothed, that's what it says. Clothed with power from on high. So you wait until you start wearing my clothes. And when you wear my clothes, people will confuse you for me. Amen. Demons will see you and say, ah, that's Jesus. They will bow just as they bow to me. My clothes identifies you with me. My clothes connects you with me. My clothes make you act like me. I was telling the women the power of dressing up. When you dress up, there are certain things you cannot say. Isn't it? I think it happens for men. Does it happen for men too? Because we women know if you don't want, if you want to be lazy, stay in pajamas. The whole day. Oh, Kaba. Kaba is an African word that is big, doesn't, I mean, doesn't fit you. It basically is shapeless. <laughs> 
But I was saying that it depends on the fabric because there are some fabric of kaba that is high level. You can actually take it out to go for programs depending on what you price you put into it. Amen? So the cloth that you wear shapes how you act. That's why in corporate world, there is a dress code. Isn't it? They are trying to work out your productivity by how you look at yourself. What you look on the outside will shape how you think in the inside. So, how about we have a dress code for church, for kingdom? How, how about we come in our best to worship the king? How about that? How about saying, I'm, I'm going to the king of kings. I'm not holding back anything. He's my Lord. One lady actually told us, Mama told us a testimony yesterday. I'll tell you those who are not there. So that you can start practicing it. I told myself I'll practice it. That there's this woman who said, whenever she has a new um, cloth, fabric, I'll call it fabric because it, it's difficult to say clothes. Like It's a fabric. She would bring it to church first. She says that if I bring it to the house of the Lord, God will bless it, sanctify it, consecrate it for himself. And it will not fade. She has had rapper this African fabrics 30 years and more and it still looks brand new. From the day she started doing that, so your clothes, the Bible said about the Israelites, their shoes did not wear out. It is possible the glory we carry inside affects the outside. Amen. So I wanted you to see the foundation of this story is the foundation, a principle of imitation. Everybody say with me, imitation. Imitating Jesus. So that is the scenario we are setting the plate. Now, let's go ahead and see what happened with Jesus and Peter. Matthew chapter 14, and we're starting from verse um, 23. Bishop explained this passage so well, um, and, and please go and listen to that message from verse 23. After he had dismissed the multitude, he went into the hills by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was still there alone. But the boat was at this time out on the sea. Everybody say out on the sea. Many, many miles distance from the land between beaten toes by the ways for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch, amplified verse, amplified version says the fourth watch is between three and 6 a.m. That's the fourth watch of the day. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came to them walking on the sea. We are in a time, church, where Jesus is coming to us. We are in a time when before the great coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, he is coming to our boat. He's coming into the church again. He was withdrawn. But after praying and waiting, he's coming back. He's coming to his church. He's coming to his church. He's coming not as he came before. Before he used to come to them on the boat. But this time, he's coming walking on the water. He's coming walking on the water. Why did he change his mode of transportation? Why did he change his mode of transportation? Can anyone give me the answer? I have set the stage. What was the reason? Jesus changed his mode of transportation. Answer. Any answer to encourage them, one. Number two, to show his power. Number three, to test their faith. Number four, take them to another level. Number five, to make them imitate him. Who stop? I have set the stage. The stage was about imitation. John the Baptist doing like Jesus.
Jesus. Now he says, my disciples, in the end times, I'm coming to you with one purpose. Imitate me. I am coming to you. I'm showing myself to you. The purpose of which I am showing you the miraculous is for imitation. It's not for you to say, how great thou art. Which is what we have been saying. That is the starting level. That is the starting level to exalt him. But the Lord Jesus Christ said, the same I have glorified you. I have glorified you because I have done everything that you told me to do. So apart from singing how great thou art, show do the things that Jesus did. It is more than a song. I will give you 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 my imitating you. I will give you my copying you. I will give you my following you. Jesus came to them walking on water. He was passionate about being with his disciples. He was coming to them with the miraculous. And something happened. I love this. I love this. This is what Dr. Bruce says. I'm going to quote some of his things. Not quote, but say the kind of things he says. When the disciples saw him, everybody said saw him. Walking on the sea. Did they see him? They saw him. Did they see Jesus? Okay. Okay. Good. We have agreed that they have seen Jesus. They were terrified and said. <laughs> did they see or they did not see? That doesn't know what he said there. They saw him, but they said something else. But the church problem, why the church is in the boat, is that we see him, but we say something else. We believe him in the heart, but we say something else. We know he's able. I believe God, you're able. But I say my weakness. I see my circumstance. I see my past. I see what people want me to say. I know, Lord, that you are able. But my words. They saw him. That's what the Bible said. But they said, according to the wind and the waves, they gave a report based on what was in the natural but in their hearts, they saw him. That is the great divide of the church. And the Lord began to tell me that the spirit of limitation that keeps us in the boat is because of this, of this great, what do I call it? This condense, or contradiction. Because we are not saying what we believe. I pray God doesn't call us hypocrites. I pray he doesn't call us hypocrites. Because we believe he's our provider. But we say, I cannot pay these bills. We believe he's our healer. I am dying of this disease. We believe he's above all. These people are killing me. They believed, they saw, they saw, they said, they saw, they said. When your seeing will line up with your saying, then you begin to get out of the boat. When your seeing will begin to line up with what you say, then you begin to walk on water. Amen. Yeah. That's why Peter screamed with fright, but instantly, the Bible says that they said it was a goat. And screamed out for fright. But instantly. Another version says immediately. 
Because Proverbs chapter 14 says, a man is ensnared by the words of his mouth. He's kept trapped by the words of his mouth. So Jesus knew that because they said he's a ghost, they have already been trapped in fear and unbelief. A ghost brings nothing good to you. Uh huh. Let the living stay with the living. Let the dead stay with the dead. Because of what he said, Jesus immediately, he did not waste time. He said that if I leave these people inside these words that they have said, they are dead. The sea will swallow them. Immediately, he said, it is I. Can you say? But immediately, Jesus spoke. Why did he speak immediately? To neutralize what they had said. Hallelujah. The word of God comes to neutralize our own words. Our words of doubt. Our words of unbelief. Our words of failure. The word of God comes as an antidote to break the snares that your words have said. And kept you in bondage. So by the spirit of God I pray that some will be free today. As you hear the word of God. And that's why we must hear the word of God constantly. Because we have said too many enslaving words. Jesus immediately spoke to to tell them, be of good cheer. It is I, do not be afraid. I'll use the demonstration from the Amplified. It says, take courage. Oh, this, this thing is not too good. Take courage. I am... Stop fearing. Everybody say with me, take take courage. I am. Stop fearing. These three things are the things that will take you out of the boat. It was, Peter first of all did not come because of the word come. He had to be delivered in his mind from it is a ghost. And God used these three words. Take courage. I am the great I am is here. The sovereign one is here. Stop fearing. That's what God is saying to all of us. Stop being afraid. I think it's the amplifier that says stop fearing. Stop being afraid. I was, I was looking at the definition of courage this morning, and I was so, so intrigued. Because I, I always say, be, you know, take heart, be courageous. If somebody tells you, take heart, basically say, sit quiet, right? <laughs> it's encouraging, right? Take what, it's like you're, you're shaking too much, just be calm. Peace, 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 peace. Thank you, I love that, peace. <laughs> Peace be still. Yeah, I think it's from the word peace be still. When they say peace, you, you know stillness has to come. Okay. But I was surprised that courage is actually different from that mentality I had about peace be still. <laughs> the word courage means, let me read it to you. I, I, I just love the Lord and how he, he, he kind of changes our minds. with The ability to do something that frightens you. <laughs> That's courage. The ability, everybody say with me, the ability to do something that frightens you. It's not stay still. In your boat, it is coming, but it will be okay. You quickly and nicely go to heaven. After all, you're a believer. Take courage means go ahead. You have ability to do that thing that frightens you. I pray that each one of you, before I finish this message, will have that one thing that frightens you. And you will decide in your heart that God has given you courage. God has offered you courage. God has offered you ability to do that one thing that frightens you. It is not the ability to do that which you are used to, that which you have experienced in, that which you are prepared for. Prepared for the thing that frightens you. Wow. The thing that frightens you.
sentence you. Some of you have to take a seven-day fast. Frightens you, you will die on the third day. Mm, right? Okay. No, I say it frightens you. You feel like you will die. That is a fright. But doing that thing, that frightens you. Take courage. God is not giving you, bless your heart, girl. Take courage. Ah! You have ability inside of you. Because you're wearing what I'm wearing. You're wearing my clothes. You have ability to do that which frightens you. Spirit of God, I thank you. Because you do a new work in your children. So Peter answered, Lord, if it is you, command me. I love when Bishop asked how many of us want to be commanded by, by the Lord. If it is you, command me to come on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat. You must get out of the boat if you will walk on water. Peter got out of the boat of fear, out of the boat of compromise, out of the boat of sin, out of the boat of passivity, out of the boat of procrastination, out of the boat of the fear of man, out of the boat of, of what will people say? He left 12 disciples in the boat. He did not say that, oh, I'm waiting. Let us all be in one accord. <laughs> Hold our hands together. Look, in the last days, Jesus is coming for a remnant. He's coming for one, he's coming for two. He's coming for the one who leave the others in the boat and jump out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peter said, if it is you, command me to come to you. Peter's desire was just to be with the Lord. He was not coming, he was not walking on water to show a miraculous sign. He said, Master, you are there, I want to be there. Amen. My desire is to be with you. He experienced a miracle just out of his passion to be where Jesus is. Jesus comes walking to us with the miraculous. But we come going towards him with passion. With passion. With passion. With passion. Master, I don't want any distance between you and myself. I'm in this boat and you are not there. And that is not good enough. I can hear your voice, but I cannot see you. That's not good enough. I can hear your voice, but I cannot touch you. That's not good enough. I'm going to walk until I am hand in hand with you. Amen. And God will always create a way in the sea for those who want to come meet him. In Job chapter 9, I actually saw that God walks on the sea. The Bible says he walks on the sea. He has a way inside the sea. And I'm like, ah, so this walking on water is not the first new thing for Jesus. This is how they do things in heaven. Amen. Ah. He made the water, right? <laughs> Let us see one example. I'm wrapping up. Let's see one example of someone who walked on water. And let, what, let's make it practical in our time because we're not telling you to go into the Atlantic Ocean and start walking on water. <laughs> Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. We're going to see the story of Gideon and how Gideon walked on water. Walking on water is just getting out of the boat in your desire to obey God doing the miraculous. You know, people laugh at Peter because he fell and stopped and, you know. But you know what? When Jesus picked him both, the Bible says they both walked into the boat. So he walked again even after he had fallen. Hallelujah. He walked again. That was not all about his walking. After he sank from seeing the waves, the Bible says they both walked into the boat. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, let's see the story of Georges, of, of Gideon very quickly. And we're just going to quickly see these principles. Again, the Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord. For seven years, he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Because of the Midianites were so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountains, in clefts, in caves, and strongholds. They prepared what? Shelter. 
they were in quarantine. Uh huh. They hid themselves <laughs> in their shelters. The Bible says they made for themselves dents. Others say shelters, tents, and the mountain in caves under strongholds. I don't know what thing you have made for yourself to hide. To hide yourself. To hide your weakness. To hide your sin. To hide. I want to announce to you Jesus is coming to that cave. The disciples were inside the boat and Jesus was coming to where they were hiding in the boat. Whenever the Israelites planted their crop, the Midianites, Amalekites, and the Eastern people invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined all the crops and spared no, not a living thing for Israel, neither sheep, nor cattle, nor donkey. It, so basically, these people were in devastation. Verse 6 says, Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. They were impoverished. I'm telling you, America has been greatly impoverished by this corona. Isn't it? It has rendered the nation many companies filing for bank bankruptcy. It is something, yes, the whole world, not just America. I mean, African countries, you lock them in for three months. How can they survive? It's something that came to impoverish. It's like it took everything. But I have good news for you. The Bible says, and it came to pass. I love when Jesus says that uh, it's coming to pass in your life. And it came to pass. Yes, Corona, you have come to pass. It will pass. Your story too will end. They will not even remember that there was a name. There was some other flu. Sometimes, somewhere, nobody even talked about it. What's it called? Black flu? Bird flu, Spanish flu, swine flu. Some kind of flu. That was killing so many people. Now we don't even know what they were. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of it, that the Lord, that the Lord, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel and said to them, that's why we are looking forward to the prophetic conference. Thus says the Lord of Israel, I brought you out of Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage and I've delivered you out of the hand of the Midian and out of the hands of all the priests and gave, and gave them that gave, and I gave you their land. The Lord comes to these people who are hiding, these people who are afraid, these people who have taken, everything has been taken of them, uh, from them. And what does he say? He gives his report. This is what I did for you. This is what I did for your fathers. This is how I delivered you. Again, coming back to our message of imitate, it tells us that whenever we want to walk on water, we must remember what God has done. We must remember his faithfulness in times past. Amen. This is what he did for me. Lord, you saved me. Lord, you protected me. Lord, you delivered me. I know you will deliver me again. The Bible says that, um, and he's, we, we, we're going to jump some. And then an angel of the Lord sat on an oak which was in opera and pertained to Josh of Ebized and the son of Gideon, threshing wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, thou mighty man of valor. Are we there? Are you with me? The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Other versions say, you man of fearless courage. Anybody see all the difference here? The man is hiding from the Midianites. Everything has been taken from him. God is saying what? Fearless man. The ma <laughs> Thank you, God. Yeah. Some people are getting the revelation here. I pray that you get revelation because I cannot say everything. I pray that you pick it. I pray you pick it in the spirit. God did not call Gideon according to his circumstance or what he was saying. God was speaking so that his circumstance should line up with the word. Called him a fearless
this man, a man who was hiding, a man who was afraid, a man whose whole nation had built shelters. You are the fearless one. So the word must go ahead before our actions change. The word of God must go ahead. Many of you want to change before you start saying that you have changed. Let me tell you, first say that you have changed. Say he has given me a new heart. Say he has made me a holy nation. Say he has made me a royal priesthood. Say it every day. Your body will start lining up with the word of God. We imitate him. He does not speak what he sees. He speaks what he believes. God spoke fearless one to one who was afraid. Isn't that something, Sister Ben? Isn't that something? God called him a mighty man of valor who had not done no valorous mighty works. The femme de gloire. The men of valor, boys of valor, that's what they used to call them. Not done anything. God calls the things which not are not as though they are. He says whenever I speak, Holy Ghost comes to perform. The Holy Ghost only follows the word. The Holy Ghost is the action branch of God. He waits for the word, then he does. He waits for the word, and then he does. So when the, whole, when the Father says, fearless one, Holy Ghost enters your life and begins to take away the fear. That's why you must speak the word of God. Because the Holy Ghost in you is waiting not to act on your words, but God's word. He's here on earth to fulfill all of God's words. So when your words begin to line up with his word, with the word of God, you begin to walk like he's walking. We are walking on water, amen? Turn to your neighbor and say, we are walking on water. Hallelujah. The Lord said, go in then the, 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 first, in the next verse. Gideon said, you see now this is the battle that we are having. I'm telling you the process of you walking on water. The process. The angel of the Lord said to him, verse 13, and Gideon said to him, Oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, <laughs> why? Why is all this falling on us? Someone said that, have you received the word from the Lord? Why Corona? And where are all these wondrous works of which our fathers told us? Where are all those prophetic things that they have been prophesying and prophesying over my life? I'm not seeing nothing. Did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now... The Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hands of the Midianites. These words, don't they sound like the words of it's a ghost, right? These are ghosty words. That's what I'm talking about. You may not say that Jesus is a ghost, but when you start speaking like that, you have gone into the line of ghost speaking. Every doubt and unbelief is ghost. Next first, The Lord turned to him and said, Go! In the might, in this your might. Everybody say, go in this your might. Where are the miracles? The miracles are in your might. <laughs> Where are the miracles that you promised to us? The miracles are number one, go. Number two, inside your might. You shall save Israel from the hand of Midian. Have I not sent you? Next verse. Am I not with you? What is our might? The Bible says that not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So if the Lord was telling Gideon, go in your might, what was he telling him? Your might if we don't have any might, if there is no power, it has to be by the Spirit. You got it? The Spirit of God is the might in which the Lord was sending Gideon out. It was the same might in which he sent the 12 disciples after they were quarantined in the upper room. 
They were locked up in the upper room for fear. It was not that they were waiting that, you know, they were afraid. Let me announce to you, fear is not in you. Even the Holy Ghost apostles were afraid. The problem is that you, when you fear, you stop. But courage says that I'm afraid, but I keep moving. I have fear, but I keep moving. Fear will not paralyze me. Amen. I will take the risk. So Gideon was called by the Lord when the Lord said, mighty man, mighty. The word mighty has might in it. So he says, go in this name that I have given you from today. <laughs> I've called you the man after my own heart. Go in that might. What is it that God has called you? Go in that might. What is the prophetic word that God has given you? Go in that might. What is the identity that God has given you? Go in that might. Go. You must go. The problem is that we stay when we are supposed to go. The great commission was to go. The great commission was to go. The great commission was not to stay. The great commission was not to wait. I'm waiting upon the Lord. I'm waiting for his power. The great commission was as you go, I will confirm it with signs and wonders. The walking on water is for those who go. The walking on water is for those who go. The walking on water is not for those who wait for the power to come or visions. Start walking. Start going. Start doing the might that he has given you. Amen? Amen. So we're going to see how this, my, this fearless man, this fearless man that God called him, he said, but Lord... Behold, my family is poor. That is my first problem, poverty. And many of us say, Lord, I don't have the money. If I had money, I'll be serving you. God, <laughs> just wait and see. I will serve you. Just give me $100,000 a year. Only. I will be sleeping on this floor. 24 on 7 to serve you. My problem is poverty. And then, my second problem is that I am least in my father's house. I have two problems. Money issues and comparison issues. I have compared myself with my brothers. I am least. I don't know if he was the last born. Or he just felt like he was the last Coco. Last Coco is the one who is the last of the class. <laughs> My tribe is the poorest in Manessa. I am the least in A. So he had classified himself as totally useless. God says that don't worry. It is the last one that I want. Hey, I don't know where you feel like you're the last. I don't know in what area you feel like you're the last. You're the least qualified. You sing the least. You're the least beautiful. You're the least powerful. You're the least and influential. That's the one God wants. Because only his greatest power can only be seen in the least. His greatest power can only be seen in the yieldest. I begin to feel like God takes and uses people in the area of their weakness. God's great, great glory is manifested in our weakness. That's why Peter, no, Paul says, I glory in my weakness because when I'm weak, then I am strong. Don't worry about those weaknesses. Don't worry about them. Because God has a good purpose for that weakness. This one could not talk. Now he cannot stop talking. Was last, last 
comes last of the talking. I say I've never seen a man that has so many words for the wife. Like I'm just running in beautiful words. He can't stop talking. But he could not talk. Least in his family. Least afraid. Say, Lord, thank you for my weakness. Because you will glorify yourself in my weakness. We are walking on water. Walking on water, it means walking on top of that weakness. Amen? Walking even with the weakness. Saying that my weakness will not stop me. My weakness will not deter me. I don't have money, but I'll keep serving God. I don't have enough to meet my needs, but I'll keep tithing. That is walking on water. Amen. I'll keep tithing. If there's any bill that will not go unpaid, it's God's bill. The rest, BGE can call me later after I have given in my bill. God's house. Amen. I will not play with my tithe. You're walking on water. Walking on water is overcoming my weakness. Overcoming my fears. Going, even being afraid. is what it does when we walk on water. Hallelujah. I'm going to wrap up. There are so many things that happened to Gideon. But the first one was that the Lord commanded him. Go to your family's house and tear down the altars of your father. First commandment. Walking on water. We're walking on water. Deal with ancestral spirits in your house. The strongholds in your family. Deal with that. The first thing, you want to walk on water, you're going to overcome the hindrance in your family. The things that have held your family members in bondage. Number two, and you know, I was thinking about Tell me, walking on water is dealing with the things that have held us bound as a church. This is God's house. The things that are making this church not grow, we have to deal with them. That is what it means to walk on water. We're to deal with the things that are not making us function as a body of Christ as we are supposed to. That is God's house. That is God's family. Our family. The last thing that God said to him, or the next thing, I want you to open your Bibles with me and we'll close on this. It's Matthew chapter, sorry, Judges, Judges chapter 7. And don't tell me I'm taking you back to Matthew. We are finished with Matthew. Judges chapter 7. And from verse 12. Now he had dealt with his household. The Lord was sending him to the Midianites. It was from verse 9. He says, and it came to pass that the same night the Lord said to him, Arise, go thee down to thy host, for I have delivered it into thy hands. But if thou art afraid to go, Go thou to, now I'm trying to read in a version that is, is more than me. <laughs> I'll go back to Amplified. At the same night, the Lord said to Gideon, Arise, go to down against their camp, for I have given it into your hands. If you fear to go down, go with Pura, your servant, down to the camp. If you fear to go, Is not giving alternative. <laughs> Say if you fear, okay, leave it. Just go. That's it. If you fear, go. <laughs> if you don't like it, do it. Just go. When he commands, there are no alternative, no negotiation. I don't feel like I cannot. I can. Baba, bo, bo, bo. Just go. If you fear, go. But this is the this is the um, substitute that God gives for fear. Take your brother. 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 If you're afraid, hold somebody's hands. Say, please help me. I must obey the Lord. I must give him glory. I promise that I would imitate him. I promise that I am a follower of Christ. What I do is that I imitate him. He is going. He is walking every day. I must walk. I cannot stay in fear because my identity, I am an imitator of Christ. I must go. 
But I need your help. I need your help. That's why I'm so afraid about this social distance. Because I feel like it's going to make us apart. It may just be my thinking, or I may be wrong. But it seems like the social distance is becoming emotional distance. Right? So may God deliver us from the social distance rules in Jesus' name. Human beings were made to be touched. If I tell you, you have millions of century touch around you. When you live a life that you cannot touch, you're losing part of the, the neurotransmitters that need for a proper brain functioning. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Doctor is speaking. <laughs> Verse 11, and you shall hear what they say. And afterwards, your hand shall be strengthened to go down. The Lord is saying, you are afraid. I don't worry about your fear. I can still walk with you. I can still walk with the fearful. I can still walk with the weak. I can still walk with the discouraged. But the only thing is that don't give up. Keep going. Amen. Number two, you have to go to a place where you hear certain things. You would hear what they say. You see, after you have heard what they say, your hands, he has prepared my hands for war, shall strengthen to go down against the camp. So there is something about what I hear that affects my hands. Right? There is something that you hear and you cannot fight anymore. I heard it, something, I don't even want to say it, but let me say it because it, it, let me tell you how it did to me. That there is a second corona somewhere. It has, I say, Jesus, fire. <laughs> In China, and people are already quarantined a second time. I said, fire. I said, it already weakened my faith. I said, that, don't, be careful what you're hearing, you know. Don't be here. First of all, some of them are not true. And then secondly, you cannot do anything about it, so keep your ears clean. <laughs> Keep your ears clean. He said, you shall hear what they say. God had programmed that these people should say something that his son Gideon would hear and get strength. Let us hear what they said. Uh, and I'm, 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 I'm ending. I promise you we are stopping here. You know, I, I, I began to see why preachers take long, you know, because it becomes so sweet and they too don't want to stop. I hope that is sweet for you too. Verse 12, well, the same chapter. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the sons of the east lay around the valley like locust. This is a mighty, like for multitudes, and they are camels without number, as the sun on the seashore of Mot. Ah, this is an army, a big one. When Gideon arrived, everybody say with me, when Gideon arrived. When Gideon arrived, look, the people are waiting for you to arrive. So you must keep going. You must keep going. When you arrive, then their talk will change. They are still talking looseless things, but when you arrive, their talk will change. When Gideon arrived, behold, a man was telling a dream to his comrade and said, Behold, I dreamt a dream, and behold, a cake of barley bread stumbled into the camp of Midian and came to the tent and struck it so that it fell and turned it upside down so that the tent lay flat. Next verse. And his comrade replied, this is nothing else. I want us to say it together. One, two, three, go. And his comrade replied, this is nothing else but the sword of Gideon, the son of Joas, a man of Israel, into his hands. God has given Midian and all the whole. What if he did not go? These are his enemies saying that God has given us into his hands. It's basically saying, just surrender. We are finished. A man has a dream. Somebody interprets. I think that the spirit of God entered that man to interpret it like that way. We 
Why did he call Gideon's name? They say a cake stumbling. You hear that is Gideon. Made flat. Flat. I declare that your mountain is made flat. I declare that your mountain is made flat. I declare that that which has stood before you is made flat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord God is watching over us. He wants you to go and he wants you to arrive in the place of your, of your affliction. Not to run away from it. Arrive to the place of battle. You will hear something that will change you. So Dion Gideon had this man. He got he Gideon when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and its interpretation, he worshipped God. He worshipped God. He worshipped and returned to the camp of the Israel and said, Gideon's talking has changed now. He's no longer saying I'm the least in my family. He's no longer saying God sent somebody else. He's no longer saying all those things. Arise for the Lord. The Lord has given into your hands the host of Midian. He had heard the word of the Lord. Now he was weeping the word of the Lord. You don't need to only hear. you got to repeat it. Because when you repeat it, that's when strength comes to you. Amen. Did somebody pick that? He heard, he could have heard and said, it's my special revelation just for me and my God. Me and my God. Me and my God. But when he said it, strength came upon him. When he said it, strength came upon him. Some of you must stop saying the way you feel and start saying what God is saying. Verse 18. This is how Gideon ended walking on water. And when I and all who are with me, we can start from verse, from verse 16. He divided 300 men into three companies and put the trumpets and empty pitchers into the hands of them with torches in the inside of the pitchers. Pitchers. And he said to them, look at me. <laughs> oh my goodness. I hope this is the verse. New American Standard Version. He says, look at me and do likewise. Come back to imitation. I'm ending my message. We started with John the Baptist imitating Jesus. Peter imitating Jesus and walking on water. Gideon telling the people, we are doing this together. You imitate me. He said, look at me. The Lord is telling you, look at me and do likewise. Do likewise. When you read the scripture and see everything Jesus did, do likewise. When I come to the edge of the camp, do as I do. Everybody say with me, do as I do. That is what Jesus is saying. Do as I do. I forgive. I forgive. I have forgiven already. Just do as I do. Hold evil against no one. That is what I do. That is how we walk on water. We walk on water doing what Jesus does. In every circumstance, there is what Jesus does and there is what Elizabeth wants to do. Every time. There is what Jesus does and that's what, um, what Elizabeth's parents used to do. What my ancestors used to do. There is what Jesus does and this is what believers do. Sometimes it's not always the same. <laughs> Unfortunately. As I do. Next verse. When I blow the trumpet and all and I and all of you are with me. <laughs> My prayer is that, Bishop Robinson, as you begin to blow the trumpet on the TV, you and everybody here will be with you. I pray that the hearts of the people will gather around God, what God is doing in your life. I pray that as you begin to blow the trumpet around the world with evangelistic message and the message of revival, it will be not you, but you and all of us with you. Then you blow the trumpet also on every side of the camp and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. Other version says, actually, I think it is King James that says, for the Lord and Gideon. A sword for the Lord. King James. 
blow the trumpet and say the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. The shy one who was hiding is now telling people to blow a trumpet and they are also to call his name. <laughs> I was like, we are afraid to all say that this is a sword for the Lord. We just want a sword for the Lord. I'm so humble. <laughs> Don't call my name. <laughs> Don't include me. It's not me who is doing it. It is the Lord. I know it's the Lord. But if you don't let him use you, he will not jump from heaven and come and preach to the lost. He will not. So quit the fake hu humility and the false hypocrisy. The Bible says we have become one spirit with Christ. We have become co-workers. Stand up on your feet. Let's pray. I'm, I'm done. We are co-workers with him. Joint heirs means that we have, you know when you buy a house with someone? They have their name on the house as well. The house belongs to them as well. That's what it means when he says a sword for the Lord and of Gideon. We are in this together, united with him. What he does, I do. Because it is just, I'm just the other side of the coin. I'm just the other side of the coin. Gideon had walked on water until he was one with the Lord. And he could proclaim a sword for the Lord and of Gideon. That is the purpose of us walking on water. It's not to show who we are. We just want to be one with him. We just want to be where he is. We just want to be doing what he's doing. We just want to do what he's doing. So let the fear of people saying that you're proud, you're arrogant, not hold you back. Because that's what used to hold me back. What would they think about me? They think I'm trying to show off. They think I'll try to say I'm better than them. No, please hear me well. I'm just trying to be like my father. Excuse me, don't I as a child have the right to imitate him? Lift up your voice and begin to pray. I don't know which part of this journey you are on. But today, the Lord is introducing to us the journey of walking on water is imitating Christ. The journey of getting out of our boat is the journey of saying, I'm not going to do what I feel like, what I think. I'm going to do what my father would have done. I wonder, I'm going to do what Jesus will do in this situation. I'm going to be like him. If you're saying that, God, I've always thought I'm the least. I've always thought that you don't use the least. I'm the least talented. I'm the least appreciated. You have struggled with sibling rivalry. You've struggled with it because you, are, you, you feel less than your siblings, less than the burden in the church. The Lord is calling you to the altar that you might receive strength because he's saying that is the one I want to use. I want to use the list. I want to use the list. He's calling you mighty man of valor. He's calling out your real name. You are a daughter of the almighty. It is okay for you to be called mighty. He is the almighty. If we take his last name, we are called the mighty man of valor. List in this house. List gifted. Least talented, least loved, least accepted, least understood. Everyone just misunderstands you. The least favored. God 
says, my glory shall only be revealed through the list. Because my wisdom is greater even than the, great, the greatest wisdom of man. My glory will confound the wise. But to some he's saying go. You are afraid but go. To some he's saying go. Don't go alone. Take your brother's hand. Take your sister's hand. Don't go alone. Take your wife. Take your husband. Don't go alone. Go with your brother. To some he's saying. Go hear what I'm saying about you. There's a word you must hear. There's a word that will give you strength. And when you hear it, go repeat it. When you hear it, start repeating it until it gives you strength. Until it gives you strength. Until it gives you strength. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Ghost, I've delivered the word you put on my heart. As it changed me, I believe that you would change your people. Help us that when we are stuck and afraid, we'll just keep going. And that when we are stuck and afraid, we'll make sure to hear what God is saying about us that we will make sure to repeat it until it gives us strength to proclaim that we are one with you a sword for the Lord and put your name in there thank you Lord you're faithful you're so faithful to you be all the glory all the praise, all the honor, all the honor. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. 